Hey everyone, let's take these three buttons here. If we look at the markup for them, you can see a lot of duplicated utility classes. The only difference between the three buttons are the background colors here and on hover. This could really benefit from some abstraction. While I would almost always recommend you extract a reusable component or template partial, in this scenario, we'll do the abstraction at the CSS level, using the at apply directive to compose utilities into a CSS component class. Since we're creating a component, I would write my custom CSS right here under the component directive, so that I can still override it with custom utilities if I need to, since the source order will give the utilities more specificity. Instead of doing that, I'll go below the three tailwind directives and open an at layer directive block down here, set to components. Whatever goes inside this block will be automatically moved to the right place in the generated CSS, so we don't need to fiddle around to manage the source order. An added benefit of using the layer directive is that the CSS placed within it will be purgeable if we decide to purge the components layer. Check out the purge video for much more information on how configuring purge works. So let's create a button class here. We'll extract everything that is common to all buttons, so everything except the background colors. Okay, now we will create some BEM-like modifiers, so we'll have a button dash dash action class. We'll also create button dash dash success and button dash dash warning. For each of these, we'll copy the colors applied to our three buttons in the HTML. Hmm, looks like our code editor is yelling at us here. You can see that we get an error message. Apply cannot be used with hover bg teal 500 because its definition includes a pseudo selector hover. If we go in our HTML and use the new classes, so I'll remove all this and apply a button class to all three buttons, and then we'll have button dash dash, and the first one will be action, the second one success, and the third one warning. You can see they're not looking right. Looks like our base button classes, like text white, padding, etc., were applied, but the color modifiers did not work. So the solution would be to define the hover state separately. I'll create a button dash dash action colon hover to target the hover state, and then move this hover background color from here to down there, and remove the hover prefix. I'll do the same for the other two. Let's check it out again, and yep, now it looks good again, and you can see the background colors change on hover. Okay, doing this wasn't too big of a deal, but now let's say we want to make the button a bit wider on larger screens by increasing the horizontal padding from the large breakpoint and up. If I try to apply the LGPX8 class in here, we get once again a warning. Can't use this class with apply since it's nested inside of an at rule. Okay, so now we need to use a media query for this, and this starts to become a bit painful. Luckily, we can use a screen directive instead and target the LG breakpoint, which is a bit nicer, but we still have to fragment our declarations in multiple places. Inside the screen directive here, I'll target the button class and apply the PX8 class. What if I want to style the focus state, the active state, target the extra large breakpoint, or use one of the many other variants available in Tailwind? That's a lot of work. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just copy all the utilities from the HTML and paste them in one single apply declaration? Well, that's exactly what this new feature we are about to look at is allowing us to do. Before we go ahead, note that what comes next involves breaking changes as it alters the behavior of apply. The implementation might also change before it's finalized, and for those reasons, we'll need to turn on an experimental flag to try this. Let's re-add the LGPX8 class in our button class to trigger the error. And now in our config file, I'll add an experimental key, and in there, add an apply complex classes flag set to be true. Back in our CSS file, you can see that immediately our warning has gone away. We can remove our screen directive here. I can select the three hover states definition here in our modifiers, and for each, I can grab the background color, remove all this, and apply the color up here with the hover prefix. 
Let's check the result. And it's still working properly. The hover state is working. The responsive classes are working. Our CSS is now much more concise, easy to read, and abstracting away components is now much easier since we can grab all the utilities applied to an HTML element and just paste it in one applied directive. Keeping in mind this is a pretty contrived example, let's look at the code we had before and what we have now. Much better.